Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Mike Springston FFC on podcast. We have developed this podcast so that you can archive, listen to a second time, or possibly listen to a first time, so that you could have them to ride with and listen to at any time you choose, so that you could dive into the Word of God a little bit more deeply. We call that radio broadcast Coaching You in the Word. We hope it will be a blessing to you. We look forward to you sharing uh, the material that we offer on these broadcasts. We pray that you will follow us on podcasts, that you will join our podcast, and that God's Word will begin a deeper development in you than at any time in your life. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for you taking the time to visit with us on our podcast and to hear the anointed Word of God being taught. Now may God bless you as you listen, as you study, and as you meditate upon God's Word. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mike Springston FFC Podcast, and welcome to all of those of you who are listening to us on Lift Him Higher Radio. Certainly, we want to say a hearty welcome to those around the United States who are downloading us and around the world in Russia, Argentina, Indonesia, the United Kingdom, around the world. We welcome you today to the Mike Springston FFC podcast. Today I'm going to do a teaching on Luke chapter 11, which is a teaching on prayer. I hope you will enjoy it. I hope that God will minister to you through his word as we study the way Jesus taught them to pray. So as we go into the message today, into the teaching today, you uh, dive into your word of God and follow along, and we'll be back with you in a little while. God bless you as we study the word. Glad you're here. Tonight we're going to begin, uh, we're going to do just a brief uh, one-night session on Luke uh, chapter 11 where Jesus is teaching what we know of as the Lord's Prayer. And I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. Now, just a couple of minutes ago, I was on Lift Him Higher Radio, and as I turned it on, I recognized the voice. They were producing one of our uh, broadcasts on Grace tonight with Lift Him Higher Radio, worldwide radio, ladies and gentlemen, God has opened the door for us to be on. As I told you this morning, uh, Jesse and Juliana and the FFC Praise Team was on World Wide Web Radio uh, yesterday, and I'm certain they've been on there numerous times over the past couple of days. But we're so glad to be a part of Lift Him Higher Radio, and we are so glad to to be sharing the gospel again worldwide. As we've said to you before, our podcast is going around the world from all four quarters, north, south, east, and west. Uh, Hi, Brandon. Hope you're doing good. Um, Our podcast is going around the world, and now we're in a position to take the message of the gospel through Lift Him Higher Radio uh, into uh, all corners of the world again. And we're so proud of that, and we're so glad for that. And um, we want to welcome Lift Him Higher Radio one of these evenings, one of these days. This uh, uh, Tonight's post will be aired on their uh, radio program, and we're so thrilled with that. Well... Uh, we are we are happy tonight because Jesus is Lord. We're going to talk to you on the process, the process that Jesus taught in prayer. Um, I want to thank all of you, those of you who are with us and, and appreciate each of you who come on this post in, in the evenings and hope it's a blessing to you. I know this, it's a blessing to me. And so we're going to have a word of prayer, and uh, then we will... Um, proceed with tonight's teaching. Father, we thank you for the Word of God. Open our eyes that we can see, our ears that we can hear, and our heart that we can understand what the Word of God says, and then let us apply it to our heart. Father, I thank you tonight because we can surrender our body to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit then can work through us to minister the Word of God. Now, we do that tonight. We sanctify ourselves 
we yield and surrender ourselves to the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, please work. Please speak to us tonight through your word and let your word teach us great things that we didn't know. We thank you and we praise you and we worship you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. By the way, uh, tomorrow I will be sharing the inaugural launch prayer for Lift Him Higher Radio. Uh, the the uh, owner of the, the uh, radio station, uh, Dr. Diane Marney, uh, emailed me last night and asked me if I would do the launch prayer for this uh, radio station, and we're so glad to be able to do that. And tomorrow we're going to share that with her and and uh, their, their uh, dial launch is what she's talking about right now. She is just on the web, but uh, they're soon coming to a radio dial launch within the next few days, and God, she has asked us to pray over that launch and to air the prayer for the blessing for Lift Him Higher Ministry. And we're so glad about that. And I also want to share with you that uh, I'll be sending out some information for you to listen to Lift Him Higher Radio. Now, I'm going to tell you, I've been listening for two days. The music is awesome. Right now, it's a continuous play loop. But the music has been awesome. The messages, the ministry has been awesome. My sister, Ellen Treadway, will be... um, doing something on their beginning in June called Food for Thought. And Ellen is very, very deep in the Word of God and spends hours in prayer. And I'll guarantee you that you will get something out of Ellen Treadway's uh, post on Lift Him Higher Radio uh, entitled Food for Thought. Well, we're so glad to see Linda. Hope you're doing good. Now we're going to get into the Word of God. But I want you to be praying about Lift Him Higher Radio because I think it will be a blessing around the world as the Word of God is shared through another uh, medium by means of worldwide radio. Well, God bless you. Let's look into the process of prayer. Now, the disciples had just watched Jesus and, and, and they saw him frequently remove himself away from them and pray. They were impressed by his consistent time spent in prayer. Did you know that throughout the Gospels there are 25 different times when it is identified that he went away to pray? Now, of course, some of them may be repetitive, But the concept of the importance of prayer is not lost on the disciples. In Luke chapter 10, Jesus has just sent out the 70. He's given them instructions to heal the sick and to preach the kingdom of God to the people. This was all to be completed by using his name. He sent them in his name. They returned and Luke records their remarks to Jesus in Luke chapter 10 and verse 17. And the 70 returned again with joy saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. They had encountered the exact most difficult opposition that was available. Now I want you to see that because they didn't come back necessarily talking about how many physical healings were given. They came about and said that devils were subject to them through the name of Jesus. They'd encountered the depth of content that brings about the problems in men. The curse. The problems of lack of health. The problems that we Uh, use that leave us in despair and perplexed all come from the opposition of the enemy. And so they turned and said the opposition that allowed people to be healed was subject to us. It was gone. The things that would have kept us from preaching the gospel of the kingdom was subject to us. What's that saying? That when they used the name of Jesus, every malady, every problem that was being held captive by demonic influence backed off. 
because the name of Jesus was so much stronger. So they had encountered the most difficult opposition, but they had followed the master's instruction, and it was from that instruction that devils became subject to to him, to them through his name. There was a dynamic that was given to them that could be used to stop the power of the adversary. Of course, we know, according to what Jesus sent them with, and their response, that it was the name of Jesus. Then in Luke 10, 23 through 24, I want you to see this. Jesus says to the disciples, And he turned him unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things you see. Well, now, they had not just seen the healings and the preaching of the kingdom. They had not just seen devils bow to them and be subject to them. They had seen the gamut of work that Jesus was doing. They had seen... The gospel preached to the poor, the bruised, the broken, the blind, the captive, and those that were not having liberty to be made free by Jesus. Verse 24 said, For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. The story then quickly transitions to a story of a lawyer, the Good Samaritan, and the story concerning Martha and Mary. Now watch this now. But these words of Jesus concerning the fact that your eyes are seeing something that others don't see, your ears are hearing something that has been looked for for years, those words are ringing in the ears of the disciples. Blessed are your eyes, for they see the miracles that they see. Others through history have desired to see it, but you're the ones who have. They've desired to see the full measure of the things which are being privileged for you to hear. This was interesting, but it did not solve the issue for the disciples. They knew that there was an underlying circumstance that was the root of of the power, (coughs) excuse me, of which he exhibited, and the power, now watch this, that had been exposed to them. If they were to live, work, and continue this kind of ministry, then they must obtain an understanding of the ministry's genesis, foundation, and root. Now, I want you to see that because Jesus is about to unfold something that I wonder if we've ever seen before. Now, Jesus had clearly told them in Luke 6, 38, why he was sent and what he was given the divine plan of God to accomplish. He said, for I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. He was here to do the will of the father and to show the father to to the people. So the work that they were released to do in Luke 10 was the expression of the will of the Father. So their ministry took root in obedience to the will of the Father, which was to heal the sick and preach the kingdom of God. It was to be done in the name of Jesus because he was the one, Jesus was, charged with the task to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the good news of the kingdom, to come to the blind and make them see, to come to those that were in captivity and give them freedom, to take those that were out of liberty and give them the freedom of of being uh, in the Father's divine pleasure. It was his task and this task, now watch this, That the name of Jesus caused the devil to fall subject to. With this knowledge, the disciples must be clear concerning what the prayer life of Jesus meant to his ministry. So they inquired and asked him to teach them to pray. Now I want you to get this. Before we get into that prayer, I want you to consider this statement. 
Jesus did not teach them how he prayed. He taught them how to pray. The content of this prayer was not anything that Jesus wasn't aware of, wasn't anything that Jesus did not know prior to this encounter. He had lived with it from the foundation of the world. So he is teaching them something that he is well acquainted with through the manifestation of being with what he's about to teach them. But he would unveil how prayer and what prayer was supposed to be and where it was supposed to go and to whom it was to be offered. Notice in verse 2, Jesus said, And when you pray, when ye or you pray, Matthew's gospel states that he taught them to pray after this manner. Think about this. This was a prayer that was consistent with the tabernacle prayer. It was a prayer that, as we will see, exposed some critical insight into the importance of the Trinity in the prayer process. Now remember that in the tabernacle prayer, we saw the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in operation in every piece of the furniture in the holy place and in the Holy of Holies. We also saw grace modeled in every piece of the furniture in the holy place and in the holy of holies. So as Jesus is teaching prayer, we will see that he does not stray from that model. So let's look now at Luke chapter 11. Let me read it to you. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, when ye pray... When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Uh, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us this us day by day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those, uh, everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now Matthew finishes that by saying, For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Now let's endeavor to break these verses into the depths of three elements. Verse 1, uh, verse 2, and it came to pass, uh, verse 1 rather, as it came to pass as he was praying, he was asking for something earnestly or humbly and worshiping, meaning that he was reverencing and adoring God for who he is. And in a certain place when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, the supreme authority on a matter as a most respected authority, that's what that word Lord means. Teach us to pray. Teach us to ask in humility while reverencing and adoring God. That's what prayer really is. As John also taught his disciples. Verse 2. And he said unto them, when? Now this is implied as the standard. It is the standard of operation for every Christian. It is not just something that you do sporadically. It is the standard mode of operation. Prayer is the method of operation whereby man builds his relationship with God, whereby man communicates with God, and whereby man is communicated to, by, and from God. Prayer is essential. Your time of prayer, stepping aside, going out someplace away and praying and building that relationship with God. It's an implied standard. When you pray, ask in humility and reverence of the Father by simply identifying him for who he is. That's what worship is. We often use the term praise and worship outside of its content. When we are in a service and we are singing and talking about the things that God has done, we are talking about praise. When we are in a service and we are reverencing him for who he is, who he is, then we are worshiping him. 
our prayer should always stem from the reverence of who he is. Now, say our father. Identify his relationship to you. That's critical. He is as much your father, Jesus is saying, as he is mine in the flesh, which art in heaven. He is in the heavenlies as sure as Jesus is here teaching us to pray. What a great thing to know that when we go to prayer, God is in heaven just as sure as Jesus was standing in front of them, teaching them how to interact with God. Hallowed. Look at the word hallowed. It means holy, pure, and consecrated. And this is how Jesus saw him, saw God, as he taught. Because that, now watch this, is how he knew him before he came to earth in a flesh and body form. He knew him as hallowed and pure and consecrated. Hallowed be thy name. This is who you are. It is not how I see you. Jesus is saying, hallowed be thy name. It is who you are. It's not how I see you. It's not how I reference you. Because hallowing you and reverencing your holiness and your purity is reverencing the real you. We spend so much time in prayer begging God for things that we need that we miss the relational opportunity to understand he is our father and to worship him for his holiness and his purity because that is who he really is. Now, this is the representation of God's authority and his character. It's who he is. Thy is the next word. The kingdom, God, is yours. Everything about this universe is yours. The kingdom is yours. Your royal rule must reign forever. Now, when we make that comment, do you know what we're doing? We are giving away the rule of our life. We are giving away. We are literally dying in the flesh to a new ruler and a new king because once was a time when we were ruled by Satan. Now watch this. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom appear and grow. Where? In me. It grows in me. If your kingdom comes, it's going to come in me. What a great thing to know. And then it says, Thy will or your purpose, decree, choices, pleasure, and desire, and plan is the focus of our prayer. We're looking for the will of God. What was Jesus looking for in John six thirty eight? He was sent to do the will of the Father. Jesus is teaching us to surrender ourselves to a holy God so that we can operate just like he operates. What a great thing to know. He said, thy will... Be done. In other words, allow this, your will, to become because of who you are and because of me making myself and my spirit subject to your divine will. You, thy will be done as. As what? As it has been, so it is. Where has it been? It's been done in heaven. It's been done in heaven. His will is fixed in heaven. Jesus brought his heavenly will to earth. And he is teaching us to pray in the same vein that he prayed. And have the same access to the Father that he had. Now, of course, heaven is the abode of God. Where happiness and the power of God is the rule and reign of that kingdom. So, moreover, indeed, and likewise, may he rule and reign in place and time the earth which is me the dwelling place of his creation the earth is where he is being sought and worshipped 
The purpose of this seeking is stated in this verse. He is our Holy Father. He is the ruler of the kingdom. His will is desired to be done in the kingdom by those who revere him as Father. We identify his complete control and power for the expression of happiness in the region of the earth. Now he abides in heaven where his will is the order of every day. And we desire that that rule, authority, power, and happiness be expanded to us who are his creation and who live in the dwelling place of which he placed us. That's what Jesus is teaching us in uh, verse 2 of Luke 11 in the Lord's Prayer. What a great thing to know. Now we see God in verse 2. Now watch this. In verse 3, we see Jesus. Watch. Give, bestow, commit, and deliver to us, we being the asker, the worshiper, and seeker, day by day, measure out to us and distribute with intent and intensity our This is the promise of your divine will that expresses your rule, reign, power, and happiness that is in heaven and produced in the earth daily. Provide and produce for me what is needed today, bread. Who is the bread of life? He's saying that when we pray, we should pray that Jesus be produced in us every day. That Jesus be produced from us every day. That the bread of life, the bread of life that speaks spirit and life, the bread of life that is the spirit of Christ that is life to all who find it, be given to us. So Jesus has taught us about the Father, the will of the Father, the person of the Father, the divine pleasure of the Father, the divine will of the Father, he has shown us that our task is to operate in the will of the Father. And then he has said, in order for you to operate in the task of the will of the Father, you're going to have to have me. You're going to have to have my daily bread. Remember whenever the the 70 went out and there they were, sent in the name of Jesus and they said these words that the the devils were subject to the name of Jesus. You know what they were really saying? The devils are subject to my daily bread. Hallelujah. (laughs) The devils are subject to my daily bread. The more bread I eat, the stronger I get. The more word, him that came and was called the word of God that was God and was with God that came into the earth and dwells within me as the mystery of God, Christ in me, the hope of glory. The more bread I eat, the stronger I get. Hallelujah. And the more bread I eat, the more daily bread I take into myself, the more of God's will I have functioning here in the earth. He is my daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Glory to God, so that we can have Jesus functioning on the inside of us. See, the Father in His holiness is going to give His will. He sent Jesus in John 6, 38 to produce His will as He was sent to do. Jesus said that same Father wants to do His will in heaven as well as in the earth. And the way for you to get it is to get in me because I'm the bread of life. I'm the connection between heaven and earth in my name name is Jesus and I am your daily bread. I am spirit and I am life. I am the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus and my bread will make you strong. It'll make you whole. It'll give you the will of God to operate from within you just like it did the 70. And all of a sudden the daily bread, the name of Jesus begins to speak out of you and the flesh And the soul begin to sit down and come under subjection to the name of Jesus, the daily bread of God, to him that is life. And your world begins to manifest that daily bread. Now watch this. So we saw the father in verse two. We see, or in verse 3, we see the Son. What a wonderful thing. You feed me physically and he feeds me spiritually because Jesus is the daily bread that we need. 
as he has represented the Father. He represents him today in heaven, and he represents him today in earth. Now watch verse 4. And, meaning also, we seek the Father and we receive the Son. As we receive the, these, we receive the work of the Holy Spirit. Now watch, because we're going to see the work of the Holy Spirit in verse 4. Forgive. Forgive. He said, and forgive. It is the work of the Holy Spirit to reprove, convict, and convince us of our sins based on what is to occur, what's coming up on the cross. We seek forgiveness through that work as accomplished only by the Holy Spirit. He said, and forgive us. This is a personal request that can only be made by each individual. Forgive me is what he's saying. Forgive us is the representation of men in general. Forgive us of our. Our is the corporate desire of mankind. It also reflects the corporate desire of heaven. That us and our, which refers to mankind, we would all be saved. God's desire in sending the Holy Spirit into the earth. And forgive us our, our Forgive the world their sins. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever and the Holy Spirit is dispatched into the earth as the governor of the church, as the voice of Christ, as him that is sent specifically not to speak of himself, but to speak of what Jesus said is brought so that you can have forgiveness of our, whatever our is. Well, we know now it's our sins and we know that Jesus, the Holy Ghost rather, is the one sent to be the reprover of those things. And this word sin means our offenses. It includes transgression, iniquity, and the cause of our separation from God. Now watch this. As for for as we also forgive. Now I want to share this with you because this is critical. There's a couple things that need to be forgiven. Three things. One is your sin. The second thing is yourself. You need to forgive yourself of your past, and you need to forget it. And the third thing is those that sin against you. All of this falls into the work of the Holy Spirit. He's going to lead you and guide you into truth. Do you think truth includes your past? Do you think truth includes anything that you did before you came to know Christ as Savior? No, that's not truth. As a matter of fact, that was all created by a lie. Where did the lie happen? Well, it happened in Genesis chapter 3. That all the curse was created by lie. But then along came Jesus, who was the spirit of truth, who was the spirit of life, whose words were spirit and they were life. And he changed you. You need to be forgiven of your transgressions and sins if you've never come to the position of praying that God would forgive you your sins. You need to do it. Second of all, you need to forgive yourself. Forgive yourself of the things that you have done that you're holding in reserve to call up upon yourself and make yourself feel guilty about. And then you need to forgive others, those that hurt you, those that despitefully use you, those that persecute you, those that try to perplex you, those that attempt to cast you down. You need to forgive them and you need to move on. The relationship of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit changes the inner man. This relationship makes man act, think, and talk, and do like those who have uh, changed him. We begin to think like the Father. Our will becomes his will. We begin to eat the bread, the Son, the daily bread, and we begin to operate under the anointing of the name of Jesus to fulfill the will of the Father, John 6, 38. And then we come through forgiveness to get to those two positions, and the Holy Spirit leads us into the spirit of truth where we might be able to forgive those, forgive ourselves, and forgive those that despitefully use us. Thank God for that. Uh, forgive everyone. Forgiveness is not relative, friends. We simply live and walk in forgiveness to all men for their uh, deeds and acts of unrighteousness. And then we forgive those uh, that we're indebted to. Although you may feel that you owe the kindness uh, of those who have done unrighteous deeds towards you, that you're owed 
kindness from them. We cover those deeds and acts in the blood of the Lamb and leave them to the will of the Father. Then the Bible, the, the prayer is about to conclude. And he says to us, this is specific to each individual. And now that we know the Father, the Son, and have experienced the work of the Holy Spirit through his producing in us a newly created spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus, there is more for us to pursue in God. There is much for us to be aware of as we begin to live the new life. We must remember that the old life lurks and the old boss attacks. We must now learn to lean on the works of the Holy Spirit that are prominent in and from his personality that are working through us. Lead us not into temptation. He will not take us into circumstances and situations that create troubles with our old life and old lifestyle. He is leading us into truth, not error. The individual will now not be led to the brink of sin in order to be tested, tempted, or tried Or to attempt to test your uh, belief system. The place where the old life lived is not where you need to be. And it is not where the Holy Spirit is leading you. He will never lead you into anything that has to do with the old life system. It is strictly, if you go there, it'll be because of your own desire, your lust of the eye, your lust of the flesh, and your pride of life that takes you back there. We find many people that come to Christ and wind up reaffiliating and reassociating with the old life, friend. That is not how the Holy Spirit works. He leads you into all truth. Temptation is the place where your belief system is purposefully tested by the choice that was made by the believer to walk into something that was apparent to be a pitfall and a problem from the beginning. This is either from the past or a new challenge in either situation. This is the place that the Spirit has led you away from, away from. You make a decision as to where you go and how deeply you're going to be involved. There is a way of escape, and it's by listening and obeying the Holy Spirit. Then he's told you how that deliverance was going to happen. But deliver me from evil. The Holy Spirit becomes the means of rescue. He is the one who is operating in you to say, don't do it. Just don't. Do it. He is the deliverer. He is the current that is sweeping over you with the knowledge that where and what is about to happen. If you choose that old way, it'll have dire implications on your spirit life. This is the warning to stop and retreat. It's how God has planned to comfort and separate you from the attacks of the devil. These attacks appear in and against the physical Now watch this, but they are devised and designed in the spiritual. Therefore, it is from the spiritual that the evidence of deliverance will come as the Holy Spirit who abides in us will make your means of escape. You must determine to obey. When you do, there will be a lot of victory. Now, it's the work of the office of the Holy Spirit to lead us away from the self-imposed effects of our inability to deny our flesh. This will only occur when and if we develop a listening ear and an obedient heart. Isn't that what he said in Luke chapter 10? You have been given the ability to see and the ability to hear. We have been given the Holy Spirit. And then he takes them into prayer and he shows them the Father. He shows them himself. And he shows them the Holy Spirit. And he said, here are your means. Here's the way to pray. Seek God. Revere God. Find his will. Go after his will just like I have. In order to do his will, find me as your daily bread. Get into me. Find everything you can do about me. I remember the book I wrote and I found the 10 things, revelations about Jesus Christ. He is eternal. He is personal. He is creator. He is salvation. He is life. He is illumination. He is uh, uh, grace. He is truth. He is glory. All of those things in John chapter 1, those things become your 
daily bread. They become the revelation about the Jesus that gives us daily bread to live every moment of every day. And then there's the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, the comforter, one called alongside to help. We found him in verse 4. And now we have the whole picture of the Trinity in three verses taught by Jesus Christ. And he said, if you will know the Father and you know his will, you'll find me as the bread of life. And then I will teach you and train you and you will have power through my name. And then along will come the Holy Spirit and you will be able to forgive be forgiven forgive others and, and forgive yourself and then you will find your way of escape so that you can live the life of being more than an overcomer what a great prayer friend what a great prayer we just heard jesus tell us what insight and knowledge into the framework of the economy of heaven that god is trying to build in you in the earth Father, bless your word and bless your people as we study your word. May we pray this prayer with new understanding that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are working their works in us so that we can become the dynamic children of God sent with the name of Jesus to make devils be subject to us. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. May God richly bless you. Thank you, Mary. And well, we pre hope you appreciated the Word of God today in the Lord's Prayer. What a great revelation is that, that we find the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all being taught by Jesus in the Lord's Prayer. Well, may God richly bless you as you study the Word of God. Contact us at springston56 at gmail.com, mikespringstonministries.com, or you can contact us through Family Fellowship Chapel's Facebook post. Uh, if you would like to watch any of the videos that are associated with the audios, you're welcome to do so at the Family Face Fellowship chapel facebook post that's the family fellowship chapel facebook post may god bless you richly as your day unfolds and your week unfolds until we have the opportunity to come back to you again praise god and remember one thing friend jesus is lord and don't you forget it I'm looking forward to hearing from you someday soon at springston56 at gmail.com to share with us the great things and the great revelations that God is giving you through His awesome Word. May God bless you as you study the Word of God is our prayer.